analytical hates change. If you're an analytical, this lecture today is striking terror in you. Because change is the last thing in the world you want to do. And you wonder why you're a failure, and you wonder why your finances are bad, and you wonder why you're not succeeding in life, and you're not rising up, and you wonder why nobody even knows you exist. Got to deal with those weaknesses. Now get to shortly how, how we're going to deal with some of these weaknesses. Okay, well, perhaps we can let the amiable, the analytical off the hook a little bit and go and look at the amiable. The amiable is somebody who has high emotive expression but is not very assertive. Here are some of the weaknesses of the amiable. The amiable is afraid to confront. Doesn't like to rock the boat. Just let things be. It's not upset people unnecessarily. And if there's a problem, if we leave it long enough, maybe it'll go away. They never deal with the problems. They just live in hope that the problem will go away. That people won't go away. They'll stay in your face. And people will take advantage of you. The amiable has no time or work orientation. They're always saying, you know, I wish I had time to get that done, but you know, man, I just need more time. I will do that job as soon as I get round to it. And they never get round to it. All they ever get round to doing actually is socializing, chilling out, chatting with people, having a good time and enjoying people and life. Analytic, the, the amiable is one of the biggest time wasters that you can get. Okay. The amiable is very easily manipulated by others because they want to please people. They want to be nice to people. They want to make people feel good about themselves, want to be as helpful as possible to others. So the amiable very quickly says yes to anything. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen if you're amiable. You're going to end up in somebody else's plan. You're going to be part of somebody else's success and you're going to help somebody else look good. And people are going to use you to accomplish their purposes. I can't understand. I'm just being a nice guy and I'm being friendly and I'm ready to help other people. But people just take advantage of me. Nobody ever respects me or looks up to me. Those are the weaknesses of the amiable. Well, you think by the time we finish with the analytical and amiable, okay, definitely we've got to be an expressive or a driver, right? Because they obviously have all the strengths and not the weaknesses. So if you're sitting smug there as an expressive or a driver saying, thank God I'm not an analytical or an amiable, your turn's next. Don't think that every temperament is immune of weaknesses. You've all got weaknesses. Okay. Mr. or Miss Expressive. Impulsive. Always going off half-cocked. Shooting for the stars or the moon. And you don't have enough fuel to get off the ground. Always impulsive. Always jumping the gun without thinking what you're doing. Always pushing and upsetting people. Well, there's some good parts there. But impulsiveness is never a good quality because you tend to miss opportunities, you'll tend to jump into situations that'll get you into trouble. The expressive is subject to emotional downs and depression because the expressive th thrives on emotion and excitement and new things, new exciting things to do. And if new exciting things aren't there, Life is dull and boring. And the expressive sits there, down in the mouth, 
accomplishing nothing in life. Expressives have the tendency to be what we call manic depressive. One moment they want to conquer the world, the next moment they've been conquered by the world. They're too reliant on their emotions. Because you see, the expressive is totally assertive and totally emotionally expressive. Now, the good news is that expressives have a greater tendency to succeed in life. And in spite of these weaknesses, I would rather be an expressive than an analytical. Because the expressive being assertive and emotively expressive will very often succeed on pure assertion and emotion. But the expressive can be very unreliable because an expressive is unable to carry out routine work. An expressive cannot work in a nine-to-five job because that's boring. An expressive cannot be given something to do on a regular basis because that's boring. It's not exciting. There's no challenge to it. There's no thrill to it. There's no goal to it. So you can't rely on an expressive to get involved in a project that is going to require consistent work over a period of time. They will fail. And then we have the driver. The typical boss type. Person who is not emotively expressive but very strongly assertive. The driver has very little care or understanding for people. People are necessary pawns in a driver's day. They are objects to be used to accomplish the job that needs to be done. And if they are not good enough, we'll throw them away and get another one. The driver bus will very quickly fire you and replace you with somebody else because you don't suit his purposes anymore. Drivers will ride all over people, stand all over them, don't care about their feelings, and wonder why the women are always in tears and the guys are booking off sick because they don't feel like coming to work. The driver tends to impose his or her will on others. Ooh. Don't you love have somebody imposing their will on you? You know where that all started? Of course, it started way back when Lucifer tried to rebel against God and impose his will. Huh? Drivers try and impose their will on others. They have no regard for people's feelings. And people, sooner or later, kick against that and the driver ends up in the cold all alone. The driver is a workaholic. Everything is work. Driver doesn't have time for social or have fun. The driver has no time to smell the roses. Well, you know what? Isn't that great if you can be a driver and get the job done? Because the job is going to generate money, isn't it? You know how exciting it's going to be there to sit there all alone by yourself with all that money. What are you going to do with it? Eh? I'll go on a cruise all by yourself because who wants to be with you? You're a miserable pig. Nobody likes being around you because you have no people orientation whatsoever. You don't care how people feel and there's no time for social. The driver takes his laptop with on, on his holiday cruise so he can get some work done. The cell phone is there and he's continually in, in contact with his office to make sure that the business deals are going through. In English is an expression we use, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Driver is a dull boy. So there we have it. All the temperamental weaknesses. Now which of those would you rather be? The analytical? The perfectionist? You can't make decisions? Would you like to be the amiable, the nice guy? Who lets everybody take advantage? Would you like to be the expressive who's always shooting off half-cocked somewhere? 
Would you like to be the driver who works himself to death? Which of these temperaments would you like to be? And no doubt you're saying, none of them. No, wrong answer. The correct answer should be all of them. I'll tell you why, because each of these temperaments also has a strength. Several strengths. So let's not major on the weaknesses. Let's see if we can major on the strengths. And when we finish with the strengths, let's see if you can choose which temperament you'd like to be. Okay, what are the strengths of the analytical? Yes, believe it or not, the analytical does have some strengths. The analytical is able to anticipate problems before they take place. The analytical makes a good programmer, good at using what if or if then else statements in programming code. If this happens and that happens, then what if this happens and what if that? And if this happens and I do that, what happens there? Analytical can work it all out, make excellent chess players. They sometimes think five moves ahead and win the chess game. Because they were playing against an expressive said, ah, oh, what the heck, I feel like moving that part. Let's do it just for the, for the fun of it. Analyticals can work out in advance everything that could go wrong and allow for it and change the plan and say, we shouldn't go in that direction because that will happen. And if that happens, we should do that. Very good thinking. Analyticals are excellent at work study and planning st uh, work projects. Analyticals will tell you where you're doing your job wrong and how you can improve it. Just don't ask them to do the job. Because that's their weakness. But there's a lot of good in the analytical temperament. There's some very good strengths there. Now if you look at the temperaments, you'll find the analytical and the expressive are total opposites. And the amiable and the driver are total opposites. So a pretty good combination here would be to put the analytical with the expressive. Because the expressive is all impulsive, going off half cock, doesn't think about the consequences of their actions. The analytical, on the other hand, has already anticipated everything that could go wrong. The expressive gets frustrated with the analytical, says, I couldn't care what could go wrong, let's just go and try it. And they fall on their face sometimes, and sometimes just get it right by accident. Sometimes run right over the problems. Now, if the analytical would simply get a bit more motivated like the expressive, and not take so long to get things going, the analytical could accomplish a lot. If the expressive would just take the time to listen to the analytical and anticipate some of the problems before firing off 10 shots in any direction, you may hit more targets with your 10 shots. So the strength of the analytical can actually help to overcome the weaknesses of the expressive. Let's look at some of the strengths of some of the other temperaments. The amiable is an excellent connector, always meeting people. The amiable will find prospects for business. Where the driver who's got this hard business work orientation never seems to get people who want to buy because they don't bother to take the time to find out more about people and understand people. The driver and the amiable are total opposites. The driver could learn a little bit from the amiable about how to treat people right so that they'll want to buy the product. So here again we see the weakness of the driver is overcome by the strength of the amiable. The amiable disarms the objections by making other people feel good about themselves. The amiable is such a nice guy that people will buy just because they feel good when they're with such a person. 